Hey there, everybody. MC Schrafel here, asking the question from lockdown, who wants to live forever? And if you do, how do you use strength practices to support that? Well, actually, there are at least 10 great ways that strength practices uh, help you be a better you doing whatever you want to do for as long as you want to do it. The question often comes up for me now is, um, how wonderfully fit, active, alive, strong do you want to feel 50 years from now? And if it's the same as what you are now, or even better than how you're doing right now, then how are you going to get there? Well, strength practice is one way to do that. But first of all, what is a strength practice before we get into the benefits? Well, the way I've been looking at it is that it is a, a skill-centered practice that lets you contract your muscles to create positive adaptations in those tissues. So it's a challenge to your skeletal muscle, and the difference between skeletal muscle and, say, smooth muscle like your heart or your gut is uh, your volitional control over these organs. And that by doing this with these uh, skeletal muscle tissues, you actually create a bunch of positive adaptations throughout the rest of the system. So that's kind of fantastic. Um, in another way of putting it, as any Russian coach worth their salt has put it for ages, is that strength is a skill. So we can remember that. Now, a related question that comes up around this is, well, can't I just do my Pilates or my running? Or a related question I could have put in here is, can't I just keep going to the gym and lifting heavy loads? Why do I have to go do that sucky cardio stuff? Um, the answer to that is less about, can you not keep doing this? Of course, you can do whatever you want. But to ask a different question, which is, is my approach uh, hitting on all the different tissue types that my muscle has to promote the best adaptions possible or adaptations possible because it turns out that these different systems and processes inside the muscle, and this is what we're looking at right here, um, are affected by different hormones, different signaling processes, different energy systems, and also in terms of just uh, the fibers themselves inside of the muscle never mind the energy system, but just the fiber types are also different in different muscle. And those have an effect on the type of strength that we have from long, slow endurance, where we can go forever doing something, to quick, heavy, powerful uh, movements from sprinting to lifting heavy weights to punching somebody. So it's really not about, as I say, can't you just do your favorite practice? By all means, do it. But make sure that if you care about the well-being of your body lasting for as long as you do and being fantastic for as long as you're around for, then the simple check is, am I hitting these different properties of my muscles in appropriate ways for them to optimize their adaptation to allow me to have great quality of life? So, of course, you can incorporate things like... Um, uh, yoga handstands are fantastic isometric contractions that also work the balance system to other um, body-based movements like a burpee, which we see here, which is dynamically uh, moving the body with load, something called plyometrics, um, fear and explosiveness basically rolled into one, that all affect our bodies in different ways ways and when done right are extremely positive. And speaking of done right, the kind, other kinds of questions before we get into the main event here are usually around, is strength training going to pay off by helping me lose weight or gain weight? Or am I going to get bulky or hurt? How do I get the six pack? Um, I'd like to change this question just slightly to ask, and this is really what this presentation is about, is what adaptations does strength training and a strength practice Create And I'm using a difference between strength training, like just going to the gym. I don't want you to think it's just picking up loads of weight and putting them down again. But a practice is something that focuses specifically on the skills building that's always happening to create adaptation. And uh, as we go through these next stages, you'll see that these adaptations are positive and they're synergistic, by which I mean they connect with other things going on in the rest of the body. And the getting hurt part... This is where you really want to find uh, a resource that you can trust to make sure that the progressions that are built in to produce those adaptations you want are sensible and are not going to put you in harm's way.
Um, we can talk about that some other time about how to uh, do that and I have a suggestion at the end of this presentation. Okay, so to start with the, the most important question for many of us is, you know, how are you going to look in the mirror when you're doing this? Is there going to be a payoff? Because a lot of people start uh, strength practices by saying, I don't like what I'm seeing in the mirror. I want to look better. I'm seeing all these fantastic body transformations online. I uh, want to get me some of that. And so in terms of strength training, well, actually, the, 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 one of the key benefits is that it does affect our body composition, and it does, therefore, affect our attractiveness to people. Uh, there's some interesting research done that shows that it seems that the thing that turns us on the most, whether you're a man or a woman, is the leanness of the body, the, the uh, Seeing that that leanality, if you will, even more so than the muscle, was this this thing about uh, lack of fat, and so there's just telling you what the the research is showing, and so what happens with with uh, physical training is that we can, uh, well, we just get that payoff of having our bodies closer to it seems what the ideal attractor is. That doesn't mean that these things are not socially constructed, as if they're not innate, um, but uh, this does seem to be something that is, it's not easy to do, but the work suggests that as social uh, creatures, um, we do get turned on by certain forms of the body. Other researchers looked at what are the structures of shapes that, that make us feel all warm and fuzzy. And so anybody, the cool thing is anybody pretty much can do movement work and build practices that help them uh, become, uh, develop a body composition that is uh, attractive to fellow humans. And in fact, interestingly, this also sort of relates to recovery or sleep, um, is that that the physical practices help us in our recovery sleep, which also apparently, and I won't get into it, um, but makes us more attractive. Yes, well-rested people apparently are more attractive to others than people who are sleep-deprived. Um, okay, so related to this last thing, though, and again why I don't talk about weight too much uh, as opposed to fat burning, is that muscle is heavier than... Uh, fat, but it's also denser. So if you forget about the numbers on the scale and just focus on how that body composition is is changing, then that you create you're not uh, swapping muscle for fat or fat for muscle. Rather, uh, muscle is being built by uh, tissues being increased in in either size or also density, and burning off the excess fat usually through eating. We'll talk about that at some point too. Is it what's what's the role between um, diet and and uh, working out? But as the saying goes, yeah, can't outrun a donut. And so the important thing here is that strength synergizes with the whole organism. Okay, and so we have this by uh, organism it means lots of other pro properties of the body come into play when we're working out. You need good nutrition to be able to move loads, to be able to keep going. You need great rest. Uh, you need um, appropriate um, breathing practices we've talked about before to help facilitate those energy system adaptations. So everything synergizes. But that's number one is yes, strength training will affect your body composition. But if you want to see that wonderful change in tissue, um, there are certain um, costs, if you will, in terms of improving the other parts of your life as well, but the benefits are you feel better longer all the time. Okay, so benefit number two, and I'll move through these a little more quickly because they're really fantastic and you'd just be overwhelmed with goodness here, is that benefit two is just the reduction in all-cause mortality. There's increasing numbers of studies coming out that show that strength training, uh, what I call strength practice, is associated with a reduction of all the various types of diseases you could think of that usually kill us, from cardiovascular to diabetes to metabolic syndrome, um, everything. So that that kind of is a is a good thing. Just start working out with your strength practices, and you turn on all sorts of processes that help build. Um, all cause mortality resistance, and in fact, some of those processes is benefit three, is 
uh, improved immune and inflammatory responses. A lot of people are down on inflammation. Inflammation is really important to us being able to build tissues, repair tissues, clean out the crud in our systems, and refresh it. And immunity, uh, especially in the time of COVID, we're learning an awful lot about how important it is for our immune system to be able to respond as quickly and effectively as possible um, to little invaders that would like to take up space in us as well. So I won't go into the huge detail about this, but sufficient to say is that there are all sorts of incredible benefits of strength training for these processes that strength training in particular is um, triggered to do so you can eat really great and that's fantastic but it's this combination of really pushing the uh, skeletal muscle adaptations that seem to help with these other processes because we are wired to move okay and as you do these things something fantastic help and happens besides my joy of being able to do a pull-up somewhere on a construction site in France uh, but really, that's fantastic. You know, I can see a pipe somewhere and go, I could do a pull-up. That feels great. Why is something so simple, so cool, and so inspiring? Well, this is benefit four, is the building of confidence as you build skills. As you start to learn about yourself, other things become possible, which takes us to benefit awesome five, which is related to benefit four, is that as you gain confidence and skills, you also increase your capacity to do more cool things that you want to do and often quicker and easier than prior to having that strength. It's kind of like imagining that, that you have a, a certain capacity prior to doing this kind of strength practice, but as you build the associated energy, effortlessness, recovery, of being able to do more with less, you also have um, this bigger bucket, if you will, to go in front of the bucket to the barrel here to do more with, again, usually less energy and more joy. And a related question to this is kind of like, well, uh, how long does it take me to do a strength workout? Does it take, you know, a lot of time living in the gym, that sort of thing? Um, well, uh, that's, <laughs> you could see it like that, but but no, actually, um, people with lives uh, still manage to work out. It's what becomes a priority um, for you in terms of what is the payoff that you want. And so initially you might say, well, if I have to work out 20 minutes every day, how am I going to find that? We can talk about that again too. That's what we were talking about with time as a material a while ago is, is how do you make that, that priority for yourself something that you can fit in? And there are lots of strategies around that, including lack of commuting um, with lockdown has opened up some space potentially. Don't assume that's the case for everybody on the planet. It certainly is not. But if you're interested in this, you can start to build slowly. And what you'll start to see is that transition from as you put time in to the workouts, you get more time out for other things because you are more effective and efficient at doing what you usually do, which gets to benefit six, which is that strength training enhances cognitive and creative capacity because uh, cognition and creativity um, parts of the brain seem to be the same. So the more you work out, not only the smarter you get, but the more insightful and again, the more opportunity there are to see options because you're also less fatigued because you're building up capacity. And so when you're in a less fatigued state, more things become possible. Isn't that fantastic? Which takes us to benefit seven. One of the other parts here of strength training is that um, if you have chronic pain in particular, some of the work we've done is, is to look at, well, how does that affect, um, how does uh, strength training affect pain? And again, you're building capacity. A lot of chronic um, musculoskeletal pain, uh, workplace associated pain, is from not having much muscular strength in the areas affected. Start building strength in a pain-free way, and it's amazing how this impacts reducing or eliminating what might be chronic pain. There's uh, a lot to go into in that space, but suffice it to say, it's incredible how effective strength training can be for chronic pain reduction or elimination. Uh, related to this is the flip side of strength that you get is um, suppleness. If strength is the rapid contraction or just the ability to contract a muscle, never mind the tempo there, um, then relaxation of that muscle 
is also super important. You can't have one without the other, but very few people actually practice that other, what Eric Cobb talks about as suppleness and relaxation around the muscle. But by putting that into part of your strength practice, that is the suppleness part, the relaxation part, then again, you're building up more um, effective responsiveness to your uh, muscle practice. So you get that great benefit of being able to relax quickly, effectively, something elite athletes can do very, very well. Um, and that's part of what makes them uh, fantastic at what they do is that kind of control over their bodies. Um, another great benefit, nine here, is that uh, strength training, just not meditation, nothing, just strength practices are shown to be antidepressive. So they have tremendous psychological effects. And after all, the brain is part of our body, as we've seen from that, uh, where'd we go? Last one there. So coming back here, it's antidepressive. And again, with those connections through the body, how does that work? Well, again, by the, the muscular contractions affect every system of the body, including the endocrine system uh, and hormone levels that have a tremendous effect on mental well-being. And also that relaxation that we've talked about before with the vagus nerve, uh, cranial nerve 10 there affecting everything and helping you with breathing to stay calm. All these things seem to have tremendous antidepressive effects and, and anti-stress as well. So all of this kind of mental side of our physical engagement it is mediated through the body. So the state of the body affects the state of our uh, mental interactions and our engagements. So that's fantastic. And the last one here is benefit 10 wraps all the way back to benefit one with the reduction in all-cause mortality. Well, when you get a reduction in all-cause mortality, the cool payoff is that uh, you get longevity to go along with it. So quality of life for the length of life is fantastic. And again, I come back to the first question that I had was, how do you want to feel 50 years from now? What do you want to be able to do? And if it's more or better than what you're doing now, strength training is a fundamental way to do that because of the ways it affects all these systems by putting demands on them, causing them to constantly adapt, respond, and perform optimally and better to deal with the constant stress. So one of the cool things about strength training is you need to keep doing it just like anything because we adapt, we use it or lose its systems. And so we keep needing to tell the body that we need what it's giving us, so stay in optimal state. So just to wrap up here, what we've looked at today are the kind of 10 reasons we can see that strength training is a benefit for us. Body composition, reduction of all cause mortality effects, uh, immunity, inflammation support, our confidence and skills, the capacity is enhanced, pain reduction goes down, stress train, or strength training is also antidepressive, anti-stress, it improves cognitive and creative um, uh, brain practices, it uh, is complemented by great relaxation and suppleness, and all of this leads to a longer, healthier, happier life. And uh, again, if you have questions about, well, how do I do this? We can talk about the different processes in more depth anytime you'd like, but if you would like to outsource that part of your life and practice right now to a trusted third party, I've talked about these guys before, I strongly recommend calisthenic movement, especially if you're in a no equipment, no experience situation and want to just use your body to be your load, to be your weight for all of those types of movement that we've talked about that touch on all the fiber types you want and do so safely with lots of progressions. And again, one of the reasons I like these guys in the home movement is that they do touch on all of those muscle types because they have the right science background and experience background and they talk about rest and sleep. It's very in five oriented. So um, here's the URL for you. That I've sent you before. There's a coupon as well till June 13th. And if you have questions, ask me. Meanwhile, I really hope that this has been interesting for you and helpful to figure out how a strength practice does actually connect with living well forever. You'll notice these diagrams of different things going on inside the muscles about the mitochondria, the hypertrophy, the muscle tissue, the various types of DNA and mRNA work that's going on. I haven't talked about that, just kind of showing and telling right now that these things are happening. If you're curious about any of them, 
happy to get into the details of what these processes are. They are fantastic and awe-inspiring, and they're going on in us all the time, and you can make them work for you extremely well. But meanwhile, uh, I'll just say strength practice again. If you want to live forever, this is the best we know how right now to make that happen with awesome quality of life. Okay, this is MC Schreifel in Lockdown saying have a good one. Bye now.